All right. First rule of this channel is we do not talk about this channel. Second rule of this channel is this is not legal advice. So this is uh, after waivers week six. Um, I'm working on getting the edited stuff done. It's just been a long time since I've done it and I don't remember how to do it. So too bad you get the lazy way. Um, anyway, um, I'm looking for patterns that are predictive, um, things that we can all take advantage of in fantasy football. So if I bench a guy like CMC, I, I want to understand why it was a good decision and not just do it to do it and why I would want to play someone else over, you know, probably the best guy in fantasy. So anyway, uh, my thoughts on stashes going forward are, you know, if they fail, I want to just move on and not hold them for, you know, longer than I should compounding the mistake that I picked them up in the first place. Um, you know, 40 degree days are not going to help me win a fantasy championship. Um, that's why I move on from a guy like a chain too early sometimes instead of holding on to a guy like Dobbs for too long. Um, anyway, uh, the bye weeks this week are the pack and the Steelers upcoming bye weeks in week seven. And I can pull that up for you guys are the Panthers, the Bengals, the Cowboys, the Titans, or excuse me. Yeah. The Titans, the Texans and the jets. I don't think anybody's rolling out any Panthers though. Um, let's see, moving on, I'm just reading my notes here. These aren't any particular order, um, but I do want to talk about waivers this week because I, I have seen some of the other lists that are out and I want to talk about like chasing the dragon, you know, trying to capture what they did the week before and not really knowing if they're going to be able to do it again in the future. So uh, for running backs, I have Tajay Spears been talking about him all year. I think he has a little bit of standalone value week to week, but mostly he's still going to be the upside to uh, if Henry goes down and gets traded. Um, Roshan, if he's available in your league, um, if he gets clear to the concussion, I think he'll get a majority of the work, but he might be in a timeshare with Deonta Foreman. Um, if the Foreman slips through the cracks, like it worse stashes to see how that backfield shakes up while, uh, Khalil Herbert's out for the next few weeks. Uh, Amari DeMarcado, I already did a video on him. I like him a lot. Um, that's the guy that I would be going for this week. Um, would not be surprised if James Conner does not play another snap for the Cardinals this year. Hot take. Uh, Jordan Mason may be the handcuff, the CMC. Um, may not be Elijah Mitchell, but he did get uh, 10 carries and a target uh, in that blowout. Uh, Kendra Miller, the reason why I like this is because in that blowout, he got uh, four targets, four receptions. Um, and then if you really need a fill-in at, at, at running back this week, uh, Antonio Gibson probably gives you a little bit of receiving floor um probably not much else uh moving on to uh wide receivers we've already talked about josh reynolds i'm not going to talk about him too much um i will get to rasheed rice a little bit more when we talk about the chiefs but um he basically got targeted in half of the routes that he run ran but he was only on the field for like 15 plays so that's just interesting to me Curtis Samuel, you know, uh, he's had three fantasy relevant weeks, two 40 degree days. Um, if you're into that type of thing, Josh Downs probably even gets upgraded with Minshew over uh, Anthony Richardson. And Trey Palmer is the stash, if not the rollout, if Mike Evans can't go. Tight ends. Talk about Logan Thomas before. I would upgrade him from streamable to startable. Uh, Dalton Schultz, pieces of good offenses. Cole Komet, if he's available in your league, he's, uh, I think I have written down someplace, he's like tight end two overall and uh, overall usage, if you believe that stuff. Jonu Smith, uh, sneaky stash last week um, going forward. I probably would want him over Pitts right now. Guy in my money league dropped Pitts. Don't blame him. Uh, Noah Gray, especially if you're a Travis Kelsey uh, owner. And Dawson Knox, um, he's got a wrist injury. Dalton Kincaid's got a concussion. I imagine that he might absorb some of the Dalton uh, Dalton Knox usage if, uh, excuse me, Dalton Kincaid will, if Dalton Kincaid is out, Dawson Knox will absorb that usage. Yes, I should slow down and do it more correctly. And then finally, uh, the quarterbacks, I would probably say Sam Howell is, um, I'm not quite ready to say he's startable, but I definitely stashable, streamable. Same thing with Desmond Ritter. Uh, a little cute, you know, a little bit of cute uh, stash right now. See if he can keep that up. I watched the tape. He's not good. Um, Jared Golf. I mean, this is the week where it's just like, I'm going to show you that you're wrong. 
and you know four tugs one of them on the ground and then finally russell wilson if you can hold your nose and roll him out there he's going to have that re- uh, rushing floor i watched the tape he's not fast anymore um moving forward i already talked about the schedule and the buys um you guys can watch this as i move forward so uh good defensives maybe to play this week you have a uh, kc against denver baltimore against uh tennessee washington and atlanta that can go either way um, Miami against Carolina, if they're available, I, I don't think they should be. Uh, Chiefs might not be available. Ravens might not be available. Uh, sneaky is Las Vegas versus uh, the Patriots. Uh, Rams at Arizona. I think Arizona is well coached, but it doesn't mean that like you know they're not going to have another uh, turnover festival. Um, Detroit and Buffalo to finish off. Um, we'll talk about the Niners first, in case I have to pull them up at all. I have them right here. Uh, but I'll just let you talk about, look at that. Um, Purdy is good because he has weapons. That's all that we need to know about from a fantasy perspective. The snaps aren't going to be that important because of the blowout. You know, sometimes as a coach, you just got to throw the tape out and move on. Already talked about uh, Mason, Ayuk, and Debo. I mean, they're a good team. They're going to have their weeks. They're not going to have their weeks. You know, they're the type of guy I like to pack, oh, package and overpay so I can get better players. Um, Kittle, you know, just trust the capital that you put in the guys are going to have three touchdown weeks. Uh, watch the tape. I mean, they're, they're just good. I mean, and, and they don't need everybody to win. Um, I have uh, notes about their defense that uh, they can probably go against Cleveland and Min- Minnesota. And then I'd wait and see about uh, Cincinnati, how Cincinnati is going to be going forward. And they have a week nine by wrote down um, from a bear standpoint. I watched the the tape on the, the fields game. Um, it, there's in some encouraging portions of that if the coaches are trying to maximize his strength and minimize his weakness i already talked about uh the justin Fields schedule coming up i can bring that up so i can talk about it so uh i I think the next three games are rather good um i would definitely would be rolling him out and seeing if he could do it against minnesota las vegas and the chargers maybe not the saints probably against carolina maybe not detroit probably again against minnesota and then you got the bye week Um, the one thing that I would talk about is I'm not sure the organization wants fields to succeed at this point, which means they may be looking to go in a different direction. So who knows how long or how long that leash is going to be. And again, if the coaching staff isn't trying to maximize him, I just don't know what's going on. Uh, I already talked about, uh, Herbert Khalil Herbert's going to miss multiple weeks. Uh, Roshan Foreman already talked about them. So DJ Moore, here are my thoughts on this. I did the math. He's on pace for 92 receptions, 1,800 yards, and 17 touchdowns. Obviously, there should be some regression there, especially in the touchdown department. I am going to ride him till the wheels come off. If someone comes around trying to uh, buy, I'm not going to kick him out of bed. If I want to go try and sell, um, I'm also going to uh, you know like see what people are willing to give for me. Um, I, I Again, I don't trust any of this. Um, but again, from a fantasy perspective, this is why wide receivers going someplace new or, or either going to be boom or bust. There's probably nothing in between at this point. Um, again, uh, Cole Komet second overall in advanced stats. Again, I don't trust that. And, uh, I have from the, my notes that the defense is a a sneaky, cute play against, uh, Minnesota, Las Vegas and week nine at, uh, the saints. Um, if you're into that kind of thing. Let's see. Moving on to the Bengals, I watched the uh, the tape. I, I first of all, I just want to say I, I don't want to stomp on your birthday cake by saying the Cardinals may be well coached, but they're under talented. Burrow looked really good in the pocket, um, moving around finally. Mixon, um, seventy seven percent of the workload. Um, he's probably just lost a step. He's not as good as the RB ones, but if he's attached to a good offense, high volume is going to be a thing. Um, Travion Williams, 15% snaps, maybe the handcuff. Um, don't know what's going to happen if, if Mixon goes down. Uh, Chase looks really good. Boyd doesn't, 73% of snaps, seven targets, six receptions. Um, maybe you know, in deeper leagues, if T Higgo can't go, um, I'm going to guess that T Higgins can't, isn't going to play until after the bye week, um, week seven. So that means week eight, fire him up against the Niners. I watched the tape on Trenton Irwin. I liked it. He's a fourth year guy out of Stanford. Uh, probably a dirty work guy does what he's do- told to do. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he uh, gets re-signed uh, back shoulder fade on the sideline and uh, work in the middle. So, I mean, worst guys to roll out there. If Higgins is out, probably would roll him out over Boyd at this point with those 10 targets. Tight end perspective. 
Irv Smith did 61% of snacks, no targets, sample 34, Wilcox 26. This is the type of stuff that I look for because if we start seeing changes in how the tight ends function, and we're going to get to that later on, then we can start predicting if there's a tight end to own in this offense. But again, that tight end would probably be number three, four, five, six in the line of uh, relevance. Uh, and I have from a standpoint for the Bengals defense that their schedule doesn't look good right now. Uh, maybe weeks uh, 11 through 16. Um, yeah, I'll just move on from that make it quick. So the Bills, uh, you paid for what you got in Josh Allen. That's why we like uh, nim nimbly-bimbly quarterbacks that are uh, high-passing floors. Uh, running backs, Cook 62%, Murray 18%, Harris 18%. Um, this kind of tells me that they have, I wouldn't say defined rules, but the coaches use them in, in certain uh, certain situations. This is probably a sell for Cook as far as that goes. Very niche uh, usage for all these guys. Uh, digs is digs. Dave, uh, Gabe Davis, um, 90% snaps. This is kind of what we thought he would be if he stayed healthy. He's advanced stats, wide receiver 12. If you're wondering to sell or to buy, he's on pace for 61 for uh, 1088 and 14 touchdowns. Probably not going to hit the touchdowns, but the receptions and the yards are probably something he can hit. And I, if he doesn't hit the touchdowns, I don't think he's going to hit it, not hit it by much. I mean, I would imagine 10 is definitely in line with what we thought he was going to do. Um. And again, if someone comes kicking the tires on on a on a top ten wide receiver, you should know what he's worth. If someone will give you uh, Gabe Davis for less than what he is as a top 10, 12 wide receiver, I, I would definitely be listening. Um, Dalton Kincaid's got a concussion. If he has weeks, it's going to be non predictive. Dawson Knox with seventy percent snaps compared to Kincaid's fifty three. That's with the concussion. Knox had six targets. Um, he has a wrist injury again, acute fire up if Kincaid misses time because Dawson Knox can be fantasy relevant in a high volume passing offense. Uh, the Buffalo Bills, they're the top play of the week against the uh, Giants. They have a good stretch and they uh, play New England in the fantasy championship. So if someone is dumb enough to release them or you can buy them, um, that's something to look at. So I got the Broncos up here next uh, with Russ. Uh, very streamable, low-end starter for the Jets. Uh, the 7 for uh, 49, that's what I like to see from a quarterback is that rushing uh, usage, um, even though, like I said, I, I, I didn't like the tape. Uh, Javante Williams, he was limited Monday. Um, he was, I think, a full go today on Tuesday, but I'm going to repeat this over and over again. Don't trust Thursday night football. Uh, P. Ryan was at 60% snaps. Yeah, maybe usable. Um, if J Javante's out, um, McLaughlin was at 33%, very high efficiency, did like the tape again, never trust Thursday night football that can go both ways. Um, but I could see him getting a heavy load against Kansas city. They're probably going to have a negative game script. Judy, uh, and Sutton were both at 86% of snaps. Not really interested in either of them. Judy was, uh, seven targets for six receptions, 50 yards. Mims, again, this may be a coaching thing that the front office, um, drafted him and Sean Payton doesn't like him. That may be the the, the end state of this. He was uh, up to 32% snaps, only one target. He fumbled. Yeah, probably not going to be a thing. Brand Johnson, the other wide receiver, is at 51% snaps. Um, one, only one target doesn't doesn't matter. Uh, Adam Troutman was at 90% snaps. This is a guy that uh, Payton brought over from uh, New Orleans. He was a camp hype guy there. Um, his 90% snaps translated to five targets, four for 26 and a ton. Um, so there's a trend going on with Troutman, something that I will be aware of. Dolce's, uh his 21-day window from IR opened up, and the defense, and the main thing with the defense is still continuing to roll pieces against them. Uh, the Browns, and then I do have this, this note about the uh, Broncos defense that uh, week 16, the Patriots play the uh, Broncos. That will be interesting. Um, how to attack that from a fantasy perspective. The Browns, just a few notes coming out of here. Uh, uh, Deshaun Watson could have played against the Ravens and chose not to. I have no comment on this. I'm still going to roll forward uh, against the uh, the Niners because of that receiving work that he looks like he has. Um, even though they shut down Pollard and the defense, I wouldn't roll them against the Niners, maybe Indy coming up. Uh, moving forward to the Bucks, I talked about Trey Palmer before. Definitely a stash after waivers clear. I don't know how many people are going to be picking him up unless you're in deeper, uh, more sharp leagues. Um, but yeah, no, no news on Mike Evans yet. Uh, defense, I'm not rolling him out against the Lions. I'm going to stash him for the Falcons. 
uh, cards. Uh, Dobbs didn't have a good week. Um, I picked him up um, just so I didn't have to knife fight over him for waivers. I might roll him out in my league where I have uh, Anthony Richardson down. Um, you know, you, you do you. He could be a drop. Still might be streamable. Still might be a hold. One week may not be a trend. Like I said, I tend to move on from guys when they when they can't do what I thought they were going to do. James Conner went to the IR. Amari DiMarcado, I'm not going to talk too much about him. 77% snaps. Um, there's a whole video on him if you're interested. Uh, Keontae Ingram is the other running back that I would be a little con- uh, concerned with. I remember him last year. Nothing that uh, interests me at all. When he got his opportunity, he didn't do well. He's been out. Um, I would probably go with Dare Mercado. But if uh, Dare Mercado gets uh, picked up in your league off of waivers, I would stash Ingram, see how that shakes out. That's just how I roll. Um, Hollywood Brown, 91% uh, snaps, 10 targets. Um, I don't really always have to know how the sausage is made as long as he gets me there. And he got me there another week. Michael Wilson, 75% snaps, two targets, one reception. I'm going to be holding, I'm going to be buying, and I'm going to be picking him up if someone drops him. Rondell Moore, 76% snaps, or excuse me, 67% snaps. Totally different skill set to Hollywood Brown and Michael Wilson, so I'm not really interested in them at all. And Zach Ertz, 75% snaps. Sausage, uh, again, this is one where I don't really care how the sausage was made, but you should know what you're getting when you're buying uh, old Zach Ertz in this offense. And then I have this note about the defense. They're scrappy, but probably not streamable based off their schedule. And unless their offense can put them in a good enough game script that they can just pin it back and go after teams. Again, I, I've my new theory on defenses is, is to be um, aggressive towards uh, sacks, turnovers, and uh, uh, points instead of just – hoping they can suffocate the other team. So I'm no longer really interested in bad defense or bad offenses. I want uh, defenses attached to good offenses. That's what the fantasy situation looks like. Uh, the Chargers, Eckler is expected to return. That's what he says. Uh, Palmer and uh, Johnston, Josh Palmer and Quentin Johnston against Dallas. I'm not starting Palmer. I will stash Johnston moving forward to see how the usage changes. It doesn't really matter about the production. It's just the usage that I would be interested in with the Dallas, the chiefs. There was no uh, Mahomes rushing work. I think I already talked about this against Minnesota. That may be good news. That may be bad news. When we talk about the wide receivers, Pacheco, a 59% of snaps, uh, one goal line touchdown, which is the good news, the bad news. Um, only one target again, solid pieces of good offenses. I, I think uh, expectations should be tempered because McKinn is still getting uh, 27% of snaps and four opportunities. CEH rolled for 14. Again, defined roles. Um, I'm neither selling nor buying uh, Pacheco. Uh, Tony, 38% of snaps, six targets, uh, five receptions, 26 yards. Those are long handoffs. Again, cutting into guys like Pacheco and some of the other uh, the other weapons for Kansas City. Um, let's see. Rice was at 30% snaps, but he was targeted on half of his routes that he was in the game. And they were one was a red zone target. Uh, it was a slant. I don't know if it was designed to him or if, if that's which where Mahomes decided to go with it. I don't really care. Um, I'm gonna stash it, look at what it's going forward. Um, believe it or not, uh, Rasheed Rice has the sixth most amount of red zone targets in the league. Um, so there's something going on there. I just don't know what's in the sausage at this point. Uh, Sky Moore was down to 56% snaps. Uh, so his rates are going down. MBS, uh, 65. Watson, 44, three for two and 56, had a really good contested catch I saw. That was awesome. Justin Ross, this is interesting, nine, uh, 9% snaps, but he went four for two and 28. And the reason why this is interesting is that's a ridiculously high uh, you know, target share for a guy that was barely on the field. And then he was a camp hype guy. This was a college star that had an injury history. Um, I would last year by the Chiefs. I'm not going to be surprised if Rice and Ross are the full-time starters next year, but that may not help from a fantasy perspective this year. But it's like something I would be monitoring going down the line. Uh, Kelsey was at 59% of snaps because of injury. He didn't go Monday. He was uh, limited today, I believe it was. And Noah Gray, um, 65%, may be a handcuff. Um, probably better off streams. And always remember, never trust Thursday night football. Uh, the defense going forward against Denver. And they have Denver again two weeks on the road. Uh, the Colts. Uh, Anthony Richardson's going to miss some time with a shoulder. That means my boy Gardner Minshew is going to roll out. I would say Minshew is a, a, a fairly good you know streaming option, especially in a revenge game against the Jags. If you're into that type of thing, um, my co-owner that we had uh, 
Anthony Richardson already said, I don't want to roll Minshew out unless we have a winning record. We don't have a winning record that league. So like too bad for me. JT was only at 15% snaps. I would expect that to go up to like 20 or 30% this week. They said they're going to ease him back. Moss was at 80% snaps in his boom game. Um, we'll talk about that sit start later on. Um, so don't ask me what to do. Uh, Pittman was at 100% snaps. Downs was at 71 and Pierce was at 98 and Pierce probably has some sneaky, cute boom play appeal going down down the line. Um, here's another interesting thing with the tight ends for the Colts. So uh, I will pull this up for you so we can talk about it. Tight ends. Colts. And that doesn't help me. So what did I do wrong? Oh, that's why. So anyway, uh, the tight ends for the Colts. Uh, Granson was at 39% snaps. And uh, Andrew Ogletree was up to 61% snaps. So I know I said last week, if if uh, the Colts consolidate one of these players, they might be a low-end play or a mid-level tight end play. And so, uh, you know, Ogletree getting his, uh, his snap share up to 61, two targets, two receptions, 16 yards. That's interesting. And I went and looked up Andrew Ogletree. So uh, he tore his ACL last year. So I can kind of understand if they like this guy and they're just slowly ramping him back into the off offense, that would make sense to me. So if you're interested in that thing, stash him. Otherwise, wait another week and see what the usage is like. But, you know, if he has that spike week, then you're going to be behind the curve. Um, defense, uh, deep leagues, they may be the Jaguars, maybe Cleveland, maybe the Saints, uh, probably Carolina. Uh, probably uh, the Patriots, then they have a bye week. Um, but just remember, they have limited talent there in Indianapolis. Uh, the Redskins, uh, I talked about this before. Hal's probably streamable. He's definitely st stashable. I'm not sure if he's a weekly starter yet. Um, and, I, and if the Redskins don't really know if he's going to be their guy going forward, I don't know if we should either. Uh, Brian Robinson was at 36% snaps. This is a game script problem. That's why I talk about Antonio Gibson either as a stash or as a play. If they can figure out ways to use Antonio Gibson, like in design passing work, then he's going to have some um, some value. But I would guess if B-Rob goes down, uh, Chris Rodriguez, the rookie, is going to eat into some of that early down work. So I'm not sure if, if they're necessarily a handcuffable or stashable or anything like that. Um and I, I have this written down, neither neither B-Rob or, or Gibson are necessarily good uh, plays unless we can uh, predict usage, and we can't at this point. And we couldn't do it against the Bears D because I would have rolled B-Rob, expect a good positive game script. You didn't get it. So, I, again, from a fantasy perspective, like you're flipping a coin, um, Batman and Two-Face. So uh, Scary Terry was at 83% snap. He did have his deep shots. He will have his re weeks. Again, like uh, Kittle, just be aware that – if you bench them, you're going to probably have those points on your bench. Jo Dawson was at 80% snaps. Again, he's probably going to have his week in this offense. It's going to be very unpredictable. Um, let's see. Samuel at 70% snaps has the best overall usage. If you're into that type of thing, he was a uh, seven for six, 65 and a touchdown. So like, you know, in deeper leagues, if you're really hurting, especially over the bye weeks, uh, look at Curtis Samuel. Logan Thomas, I talked about this, like the usage was already there. He's got tight end usage, eight overall. Um, I'd definitely be snatching him up if he goes through waivers. If you're really hurting at tight end, you could roll him out there. Just be aware that, again, you're chasing the dragon. You're hoping that you can catch it again, and there's no guarantee it will because this offense is going to be very unpredictable. Um, I have for the Redskins defense, their okay rolls against Atlanta and then uh, the Giants on the road coming up here. Uh, Cowboys. Again, not a lot to take away from the blowout. I think that Dak is a streamer against the Chargers if if he's available. Uh, Tony Pollard is a buy in my book because he's very talented. Rico Dowdo is still the cuff um, by uh, usage. I'm buying CD Lamb. I think Ferguson's stall, a solid. I don't hold it against them this week. Everybody looked bad, and um, we might have to tamper our expectations of a legendary season by the defense. Um, they have uh, tough matchups uh, for the next four weeks and a bye. Uh, the Dolphins, Devin A. Chain, um, there was an MRI. He, the news came out he's going to mix multiple weeks. I would not be surprised if he's IR'd. Jeff Wilson um, it, is eligible to come off the IR. I haven't heard anything about that yet. I looked it up. This would upgrade uh, Mostert in my book. Waddle's a hold. It'll eventually be his week. Patience. Um, Chase Claypool, I haven't heard anything, but if I'm really – 
if I'm really desperate, I'm going to stash him early because again, just like with a chain, we're not always going to see that, that slow ramp up to uh, being predictive. We just have to go, Hey, there is a pathway. I have to think ahead. And if clay clay pulls rolls out and we, he's that um, boundary X receiver, then you got to take that chance ahead of time. Uh, Smythe, the tight end, was at 81% snaps and a goose egg. So if it's not predictable, I wouldn't roll him out ever, even a high volume passing offense. Uh, the defense, I have Carolina and New England after Philly. So if if you have them or you can get them, you're you're you know, you're gonna have good usage out of them. And again, from my new theory about how to use defense, if they have a strong schedule uh, up to the first round because their offense is going to put them in a position more than likely where they can create tack, uh, sacks and turnovers. The Eagles, I watched this game. This was this was nice. Design rushing work for Hurts. It's what uh, we, you paid for them. Swift was at 62% of snaps, uh, 17 carries for 70 yards, uh, 6 for 6 and 38. Um, I watched the tape. I couldn't tell if it was design passing work or if it was just check downs. Either way, the, running, the Eagles running backs being used in the passing game, I like. Um, and when you're wrong, you're wrong. So I guess he's a buy if you can get a hold of him. I don't know how many people are going to be selling Swift at this rate. Um, Kenneth Gainwell's at 38% snaps, seven carries, two targets. Um, if you picked him up, I'd still hold him or try and sell him to the Swift owner. Um, but I do think if uh, Swift goes down, Penny's going to eat into his role. He's going to take a chunk of that. Uh, you know, Brown's week, not Devonta's week, Godert's week. Um, again, if you paid for them, just keep your the guys that you paid for in your lineup unless there's something telling you that it's time to move on. They The Eagles defense plays the Jets this week, um, maybe the Redskins in week eight, and then I wouldn't roll them out again until the Sammies if you're worried about that. Uh, Falcons news, you have uh, Van Jefferson of the Rams being traded. Um, this doesn't move the needle at all for me, especially in a low-volume passing attack. Uh, Ritter, I already talked about being a sneaky stash. Uh, see what's going on there. Uh, I'm not very optimistic though uh Bijan was at 61 percent of snaps 14 carries 46 uh two targets two receptions 12 yards a touchdown and a fumble no comment because people get salty when i talk about Bijan in a bad situation um algier 44 percent snaps 17 carries uh probably the handcuff to Bijan. and as the dog days start coming you know there are going to be worse guys to have on your bench if you're a Bijan owner uh london was at 86 percent snaps i think think he had a uh an attempt to uh Jonu smith if i remember correctly and again the problem with him is going to be predictive usability um i dropped him in the league i couldn't trade him and if somebody wants to pick him up i'm probably not going to be upset about it pitts was down to 53 percent snaps but he did have 11 targets for seven receptions and 87 yards um, and a dude dropped him in my money league and I am not sure I care again, predictability. They can have really good statistical seasons at the end of the year. And if I can't predict anything, I'm not sure I'm going to roll them out. Joni Smith was at 64% of snaps. He had seven receptions uh, for 67 yards and a fumble. Again, I already talked about the sneaky stash of Joni Smith over pits. Uh, defense is a little interesting for the next five matchups. Um, and then a buy, uh, and they're solid to the finish probably not going to be the one that I want to roll out because if their offense can't put them in a position to pin their ears back, then then they might not be able to get me the points that I'm looking for now with my new ideas. So we got the Giants. Uh, Danny Dimes is dealing with a neck injury. Um, he said it's not the same one that he had last year. Um, it's just a matter if he can deal with the, the pain of contact. Probably not a good matchup against Buffalo. Um, no Barkley news that I could see. Uh, maybe up in the air, I think I was in sleeper. That's what it said. Breda was at 58% of snaps. Uh, I talked about uh, Gray. I'll pull him up, running back. Giants. So uh, Eric Gray, he was at 42% snaps and maybe a sneaky play if Barkley's out in deeper leagues. And again, from a coaching standpoint, I could definitely see, hey, let's go see what this kid has because we don't have anything else. So he was at a... You know, 42% snaps. He did have 12 carries in that Miami debacle, and he had one uh, one target and one reception for one yard. So, again, worst plays to roll out there. Uh, Wandale Robinson was at 67% snaps. And, uh, you know, six, six targets, five receptions, 18 yards. I'm just going to say no. If you're rolling him out there, you're not going to get anything out of him. 
They're doing some weird stuff with their wide receivers. Paris Campbell snaps are down from week one from 67 to 22. Uh, Isaiah Hodgins is down from 75 to 39. Hyatt was at 46. This just smells uh, like they don't know what they're going to get out of these guys, and they're just trying to throw guys out there and see what sticks, trying to find a playmaker. Waller was at 92% snaps, um, 11 for 8, 86. Um, I don't know if I trust it. Uh, maybe I'm selling if someone will buy. Maybe I'm buying if someone's going to sell. I don't know what you're going to get out of Waller in this offense going forward. If anybody cares, they go Washington week seven, the Jets week eight, um, and the Raiders week nine. I don't know if I would want to roll them. So um, moving on to the Jaguars, uh, I did see that uh, basically the NFL set the Jaguars up to kind of like win this game. They kind of were doing a test to see if – a team would stay in London for two weeks and how prepared they would be versus the team coming over. So they, they set the Buffalo bills up to fail and the Jaguars up to succeed. I watched the game. Um, the, the Jaguars did look the best that they have all year this year. Um, you know, for what it's worth, um, Etney looks really good. Still not getting the goal line work, but again, man, uh, near elite, uh, Trevor Lawrence looked good, but he did have three fumbles. Ridley looked really good. Um, eight for seven, 122. Uh, Bigsby's the handcuff. I'm gonna guess. Uh, Kirk, 83%. You know, wide receiver two, Zay Jones with an injury. Evan Ingram, 85%. Um, couldn't find anything on the routes. Uh, their defense, maybe against Indianapolis, maybe against the Saints, maybe against the Steelers. Then they have a bye. Their championship schedule is against uh, Carolina, which is interesting. All right, moving on to the Jets. I will put this back up so you guys can see the after dark. Um, so we, the Jets, uh, believe this or not, uh, Zach Wilson is going to have some fantasy relevance as long as he can do things like three for 26 rushing. Um, so he's going to have another fantasy relevant week. Uh, Brees was at 52% uh, of snaps and he looked good. Um, I watched the tape. The, the interesting thing is basically what the, the Jets did on the 52% of snaps that Brees was in is they basically said, Hey, um, we're going to give this guy the ball, stop him. And the Broncos couldn't. Um, Dalvin was at 17% of snaps. Michael Carter's at 31. I'm going to guess if they Brees goes down, they're going to split time. Garrett Wilson was at 83% of snaps. Um, I did the math, and he's on pace for 82 receptions, 949 yards, and six touchdowns. I don't even think he's going to get the six touchdowns. But that's flirting with wide receiver three land if you're, if you're interested. Uh, Conklin, again, another serviceable week of five for four and 67. Um, I guess he's streamable against Philly if you're into that type of thing. Um, and their defense got the Giants uh, a bye week eight and then Vegas week 10. Um, I would, I guess I would pick them up um, week seven and hold them. Uh, the Lions, Goff made me look foolish. Nothing more to say on that. Uh, Montgomery is, you know, a high end RB1 elite. Of six targets with uh, Gibbs out. I have no news on Gibbs. Uh, the Sun God is trending towards playing. Josh Reynolds, if he's available, only did 47% of snaps, um, but that was a, blow, a blowout, so probably the script is all wonky. Uh, he split time with uh, Jameson Williams at 47% of snaps. Uh, three targets, two re two receptions, two yards, um, whatever. Marvin Jones was in at 58% of snaps, but again, the score was 28-10 to 10 at halftime. Laporta was at seven or 87 percent snaps, which is a uh, season high. Um, and the defense can be rolled against Tampa Bay, uh, the the Raiders week eight, and they're going to have some late value. Uh, again, good offenses that can uh, rush the passer on defense. Uh, the Pack uh, they have a bye week this week. If you're wondering, I watched some of the tape. Uh, Love didn't look good. Um, I just don't know. Uh, he did have 37 yards rushing. Aaron Jones with a late stretch, which is going to worry me because of the hamstring. Um, A.J. Dillon, 64% of snaps. The problem is no targets. Patrick Taylor came in on 36% of snaps. He got five targets. I'm not even sure uh, A.J. Dillon's holdable when Aaron Jones comes back. Um, Dobbs was at 86% of snaps, disappointed. He looked like he was going to be a wide receiver too. Uh, Christian Watson was at 84% of snaps. Um and they were the exact snaps that we thought they, they were going to be where the deep shots and the short ones where he could turn it up and just be a better athlete. Uh, Reed was only at 50% of snaps, probably not a thing with two targets. Musgrave, again, 
the usage, seven targets, uh, six receptions, only 34 yards. Uh, you know, I couldn't find anything on the routes. It's coming um, on 69% of snaps. And the defense is a stash this week for Denver coming up. The Panthers um, with uh, Bryce Young. I watched the tape and I pulled up the next gen staffs. Um, again, it's a second half blowout. That's where he got some of his work done. There's nothing going over 20 yards. Uh, Sanders got the first half work. Chuba Hubbard got the second half uh, work. If you're wondering, Ghost of Adam Thielen at 97% snaps. I guess I'm just going to ride it until the wheels come off. Uh, Mingo was at 86% snaps, uh, seven targets. Shark, 99% snaps, three uh, six targets, and a tug. But again, none of these are going vertically downfield. And to show how bad the offense is and the coaches are with the Panthers, Marshall, no snaps after uh, 63% snaps and having 10 targets last week. And the defense, probably not until week 12 at Tennessee. Let's see. The uh, Patriots, I just have just no. And the rumors are that Bill Belichick is going to be done after this year. Um, I watched some of the state, like Mac Jones. I think he's functional. Um, he just doesn't have a lot of help. Ramondre, um, I talked to one of my co-owners, and we just might end up dropping him uh, if we can't find anybody to take him. Hunter Henry, again. If, if, if he can't get you more than two targets and no receptions, uh, may not even be like uh, usable. Um, and if you're cute, uh, the, their defense plays uh, Las Vegas this week. And again, with the Raiders, Josh Jacobs has elite usage. Zamir White, and this is interesting because he looked like he was the handcuff. Zero usage, probably not worth holding as a handcuff. Uh, Amir Abdullah did 70% of snaps and had one opportunity. I think it was a design screen. Um, Devontae Adams, uh, I was listening to the Pat McAfee show. They had Aaron Rodgers on, and, and I agree with Aaron Rodgers when he says this. That, like, It doesn't matter if your guy is double covered. You just have to throw the football up to your better players. Like, It doesn't matter what the defense is making you look at. You just have to go, this guy's better than you. And if they're not going to do that and with the Raiders, like, I'm not sure there's going to be better days ahead. Uh, Jacoby Myers, 95% snaps, 10 targets, 7 receptions, 75, and a touchdown. I mean, that's still wide receiver two range. Um, oh, this is an interesting thing. I'll pull him up with tight ends for the Raiders. So Michael Mayer, the rookie out of Notre Dame, uh, 66% snap. So when you look at it, 49, 40, 47, 51, 66, three targets, two receptions. They all came early in the game. Um, and two of them look like they're designed to go to him. So it does look like they're going to try and get him involved. Um, you know, so this is a, a cute stash or a guy to keep a, a monitor of going forward. Uh, the other guy, uh, Austin Hooper, um, 56% snaps from a high and seven, uh, 76% snaps week uh, three. So I don't know what the usage is going on, but I would so I would guess I would want to see Michael Mayer eat into uh, more of Austin Hooper's usage going forward. Um, I do have that the defense is a sneaky, cute play against the Patriots if the Patriots can continue to be that bad. Um, the Rams, uh, Stafford is still streamable, if not startable. Kyron Williams, I will bring this up because we got to talk about this a little bit. Let's see, the Rams. And I got to take the Giants off. So Kyron Williams was at 84% snaps. And uh, let's see, Ronnie Rivers is only at 16% of snaps. That's so Kyron Williams doesn't have to take the entire workload. Only one rushing opportunity this week. Zach Evans, the rookie six rounder, he actually was activated. He didn't get any usage. Um, and they still have uh, Royce Freeman on the practice squad. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because I don't think that Ronnie Rivers is the guy to own if you're going to handcuff Kyron Williams, I think it's still going to be Zach Evans, but I don't think there's a real handcuff here. I just think that they're going to ride Kyron Williams until the wheels come off. He's got elite usage. Um, so probably from a talent standpoint, he's an RB2 with that usage. Um, maybe temper that. Uh, I watched the tape with Cooper Cup and Puka and was very pretty. Puka was working more of the outside. Cup was working more of the slot. Uh, two twos there, 89% snaps, five targs, and a touchdown. Higby, 89% snaps, uh, probably no longer weekly startable, uh, but definitely maybe streamable because of the high vo volume passing offense. 
and the defense this week at Arizona. Hey, I like I like Josh Dobbs. I like the uh, Cardinals, but they're devoid of talent. And the Rams have uh, Pittsburgh next week if you're into that type of thing. Moving forward to the Ravens, let me pull this back up. Um, so the under guy, underdog guy said that the first half, Lamar Jackson, it wasn't his fault. It was his receivers. The second half, it was him. I watched the tape. That's exactly what happened. Um, so again, no comment on Lamar Jackson. From a fantasy perspective, he's got the rushings upside that we want. Gus Bus, 43% of snaps. Uh, Justice Hill, 56% of snaps. He had seven carries and a tug. He had four targets, four receptions, and for that's good for PPR. He did have fumble. He's the guy to own in this backfield if you're into that type of thing. Zay Flowers, 99% snaps, 11 targets. Um, I don't know. Uh, Odell Beckham and uh, Rashad Bateman never need to be spoken again. Nelson Aguilar was 59% snaps, five uh, targets, four receptions, 64 yards. Mark Andrews, he's the guy to own. If anybody, 94% snaps, 10 targets, six for 65. And their defense goes at Tennessee at uh, the Cardinals in week eight. So the Saints, uh, they were in that blowout against uh, the Patriots. There's not a lot to say Ke uh, other than Kendra Miller's uh, usage is going to tell me that maybe he's a stash. Um, Kamara still has elite usage, and the defense definitely has some weekly uh, uh, appeal uh, based off their schedule. Um, the Seahawks were on by uh, JSN and uh, Jake Bobo are interesting stashes along with Noah Fant at tight end um, just to see what their, their usage looks like coming out of the bye weeks. Uh, Zach Charbonnet, um, I looked it up. He's 57% owned on Sleeper, 52% um, on Yahoo. I bet there are some people that dropped him because of the bye week. So if you're a Kenneth Walker owner, this is your time to get your boy. If you're not a Kenneth Walker owner, probably still a chance to pick up a guy with a high upside if an injury occurs. Uh, the defense is a stash for week seven against that Cardinals team if they're they're bad and week eight against the Cleveland team. Um and week 10 against the Redskins. And those are all uh, home matchups um, and good, good offenses going up against the uh, defenses that might be in a negative game script. The Steelers have a bye week. The only news of this is if you're interested, uh, Deontay Johnson's probably going to come off I IR after the bye week. I got no news on Muth and the defense. I think you could probably sneakily drop them for their bye week and then pick, pick them up next week. So you can roll them out week seven um, or week eight or something like that. Uh, if that's what you're into, maybe. Uh, the Texans, I watched the Stroud tape. Yeah, he's good at football. Uh, Pierce is still a buy. He did 20 for 66, one target, one reception, 16 yards. Uh, Singletary did 29% of snaps. Boone, 12% of snaps. But more importantly, no opportunities for him. Uh, Nico Collins was at 88% snaps, four targets. Likely was shadowed by A.J. Terrell most of the game. Uh, Tank Dell, concussion, don't know anything about him. Robert Woods, 67% snaps, nine targets. So, you know, relatively a uh, solid floor for Woods. Dalton Schultz, 10 targets, seven receptions, 65 yards and a tug. Again, pieces of good offenses. Um, I'm probably stashing him to see how he works out. He was a guy that, that did have a lot of upside going in the season because he could have been the number one overall in this offense. I think that's Nico, but, you know, whatever. Um, the defense, again, I talked about them last week. They're, they're a, guy, uh, a defense that I would be holding. The Saints by week at Carolina, Tampa Bay, rest of the season minus Cincinnati week 10. Uh, the Titans, Derrick Henry, 62% of snaps, 13 carries, 43 yards. I think he did have an attempt. Uh, a uh, he did throw the football. It was incomplete. He went three for three at, uh, receiving with 19 yards. He's a sell in my book. Uh, unless he can get traded on uh, Spears, 52% of snaps cutting into him seven for 34, got the, got the end zone, but that receiving work four for uh, five for four receptions, 35 yards. Um, he's a buy um, a guy in my uh, high school league picked him up uh, last week to stash. And I've been saying this since the beginning of the season with Spears. Um, you know, I definitely would not be surprised if he wins a, at least a week for somebody this year, this year, uh, Hopkins was at 83% of snaps. I watched the tape. He, he's still old man Hopkins. He, he's not old, old nuke, um, or young nuke. He's old nuke, uh, 11 targets. Um, he's a buy because you could probably get him for relatively cheap and someone might be willing to get him off your roster. And it's not going to probably cost you a lot to find out if he can maintain that like 11 targets a game. 
Uh, Westbrook Akine was at 70% snaps with three targets. Again, if I can't guarantee it, I got to I gotta downgrade him, even though he looked good at the start of the season. Um, the defense uh, coming out of the bye week seven, you got week eight against Atlanta, uh, at Pittsburgh, at Tampa, at Jacksonville, maybe Carolina, um, and maybe at Indy before they hit Miami, where I would not roll them out. And then the finishes off with the Vikings. You got uh, Alexander Madison at 51% snaps. Um, sell to anybody who's buying. Acres at 29% snaps. Neither of them look really good. Jefferson injury news. Um, multiple weeks, and I think they IR'd him today. I'm pretty sure they did IR him um, as I was prepping for this. Uh, Jordan Addison, 75% snaps. Uh, Osborne, 89% snaps. He's a sneaky pickup after waivers clear um, to see what his workload in this offense is going to be. And the other uh, winner... Uh, because of the Jefferson injury is the Hawk owner. Um, so if you're wondering, uh, defense, if you're into that type of sneaky thing, uh, they got week eight at Green Bay, uh, week nine at Atlanta, week 10 home against the States, week 11 uh, at the Broncos. I'm not probably going to roll them in anything. Um, and then I'll, I'll put this, I'll bury this at the end. If anybody's interested, uh, I'm going to start trying to predict kickers. Um, my my thought process is a good, or excuse me, an okay offense going up against an okay defense. The thought process, if can we predict that drives are going to stall? So um, this week I would say the, because they're kickers and I don't care. Um, the, the Titans kicker, the London game against the Ravens, the 49ers kicker against Cleveland, the Colts kicker at the Jaguars, and then both the Saints kicker and the Texans kicker. If any of those, if I can you know, guess a whole bunch of the, uh, the top kickers this week, that would be interesting. And then to recap all of this, um, the main guys coming out of the buys this week, as I roll back up my notes so I could talk about it, um, are the main guys this week. If they fall through your waivers, uh, Spears, uh, Roshan, uh, Deonta Foreman, uh, Amari DeMarcado, Keontae Ingram. If you can't get DeMarcado, uh, Derek Mason, Kendra Miller, uh, maybe Antonio Gibson. Um, most of those guys should not make it through waivers. Josh Reynolds, Rasheed Rice is still a stash. Curtis Samuel, um, you know, low floor guy. If you're if you're if you're really hurting, Josh Downs is still a guy for the Colts. Uh, Trey Palmer definitely a stash. Mike Evans is out. I will roll Trey Trey Palmer. Um, you got Logan Thomas, Dalton Schultz, Cole Komet, Jonu Smith, Noah Gray, and Dawson Knox. If Kincaid is out at tight end. Um, we're also looking at Michael Mayer, the tight end for the uh, Raiders, and uh, you know Andrew Ogletree, the tight end for the Colts, as stashes. Um, we got Hal and Riddler and Golf and Russ as either streamable or stashable. Um, and the defenses this week, we got KC, Baltimore, Washington, Atlanta, Miami, Las Vegas, the Rams, Detroit, and Buffalo. If you're into that type of thing, and um, yeah, I think that's about it for uh, stuff today.